Hello! I am Zarkoon, this is World of Warships Legends. On the screen here you see my build for a level 11 Victor F. Einstein. Fictional Commander Extraordinaire, he's got Mikawa and Kuznetsov inspiring him, and he is commanding my premium tier 7 American heavy cruiser USS Wichita in the following game, which will take place on Tears of the Desert. It's domination mode. And this video is going to be about understanding your ship and your opponent's ship. We're going to look at that understanding from my perspective in the Wichita and from my opponent's perspectives in their various ships as we come across them. But before we get into the real substantive, substantive meat and bones of that discussion, I will briefly explain why I have elected to use Einstein as my commander. Now, if you watch Teeble, which I, I know a lot of you do, you will have seen his videos on the American heavy cruisers where he highly recommends Einstein. And this recommendation is due mostly to Einstein's base skill and the ingenious skill in the first slot. Both of those, the base skill and ingenious, speed up the turret traverse on the guns. And the turrets on the American heavy cruisers are quite slow. Which, if you'd watched my previous Wichita videos on this channel, you'll know that I had elected to use Kincaid instead of Scott before I acquired Einstein and made him part of my commander roster. Why did I use Kincaid? Because Kincaid has the ingenious skill, which speeds up the turret traverse. And Teeble has made a point that the turret traverse is actually sort of a hidden factor to your damage per minute output. And that is true. I mean, imagine if you are maneuvering and you're trying to get your guns on target, but they take 30, 35 seconds to turn 180 degrees. You're going to have to do a fair bit of waiting before you can actually get your guns on target. That is, if they are out of position, and sometimes they're going to be. You're going to have to do a fair bit of waiting before you can get them on target, pull the trigger, and hit the enemy. So, if you can't get your guns on target because they turn too slow, that means you can't fire them. That means you're not doing any damage. So, it's part of the damage per minute equation there, I suppose. But now, let's talk about understanding your ship. So, the Wichita is a heavy cruiser, and the heavy designation, or the heavy modifier in front of the word cruiser refers to the caliber of the guns. Wichita has 203 millimeter guns. The light cruisers have smaller guns. That doesn't mean... Well, the designation heavy cruiser doesn't necessarily say anything about the armor. But the fact is that the Wichita does have 27 millimeter bow armor, much like the Tech Tree American heavy cruiser Baltimore. So, it is fully capable of bouncing shells from battleships with 380 millimeter or 15 inch guns off of its bow, provided that those shells do hit the bow. Now, battleships with 16 inch guns, on the other hand, like the Iowa or the Nagato, they don't care about the Wichita's 27 millimeter bow armor. They can shoot right at the bow because their shell caliber is larger and because it fits in with the you know equation to calculate overmatch those shells will just go right through the Wichita's bow potentially citadel it and cause catastrophic damage so you don't want to really be hit by 16 inch guns which is why I'm hugging this island here playing very defensively making sure that neither this Iowa, who has taken himself away from the fight, or this Nagato really have good shots on me. Now, peeking out here is dangerous. I am angled. The Nagato could shoot me. So, I am reversing now. I can see that he's probably aiming at me, 
uh, along with a number of other ships, given the indicator up by the spotted icon. Nagato does shoot at me, but that little ledge from the island provides some free armor and absorbs his shots. Meanwhile, I am able to continue pumping his side full of HE with the hope of starting a fire. So I'm playing very defensively. Those two battleships have the advantage over me. I don't want to get out there and be too aggressive. My team is now moving up, and they are going to, I think, take care of this Nagato, which is going to then allow me to move up and start shooting at some other ships here. So you want to know, you know, the characteristics of your ship. Unfortunately, it's difficult to know what the armor characteristics of your ship are, since there is no in-game armor viewer. Hopefully there will be one day. But I've said it before, and I will say it again for those of you who want to know. If you do know the value of a ship's bow armor, for example, the Wichita's is 27 millimeter, then you can figure out what guns can overmatch the bow armor by doing some very simple math. The magic number is 14.3. So what you would do is take 27 times 14.3. That will give you some number that I can't remember right now. I think it's 370 something. Or three... No, it's more than that. It's 386. So what that means is... A, an enemy ship needs guns of that are bigger than 386 millimeters to overmatch your bow armor. A lot of battleships have 380 millimeter guns. Those battleships cannot overmatch your bow armor. If shells from a battleship with 380 millimeter guns hit your bow, they will bounce off. Now, if shells from a battleship with 406 millimeter guns, like the Nagato or Iowa, I think the Nagato might actually be 410, but that's irrelevant. Those shells hit your bow, they're going to go right through. So now I'm in a position where I've got an island next to me, kind of protecting my flank, and I've got a King George and another battleship in front of me. Was trading some shots with a Boise out there. Uh, he lit me on fire a couple of times. You can see that's shaved off a fair amount of my hit points. But I'm able to deploy one of my two heals and heal that right back up. That is one of the disadvantages of Einstein, by the way, is that he doesn't come with the fully packed skill that Scott or Kincaid do. So you are stuck with two consumables, two heals, two radars, two sonars. You can get more than that if you want to run Kincaid, who is also a good choice. Now, the King George... I don't think understands the nature of the armor scheme here. You see he fired AP at me, and so did that Bismarck behind him. Both of them hit my bow and bounced harmlessly off. The King George, of course, has no chance of penetrating the bow. He has 340 millimeter guns, and the Bismarck has 380. The 27 millimeters of bow armor can bounce those shells no problem. So here is where we're going to talk about the perspective of my enemies here and their understanding of my ship and what they can do to counter it because what i can do is i can pull up here and i can just kind of sit here point my bow at these guys and if they shoot the bow they are going to do no damage you can see that that king george appears to have given up on me after seeing, you know, the lackluster results of his shot. I am shooting at the Bismarck now. He is pretty susceptible to my HE spam, and besides, the King George is almost dead. So, you know, it's, it's going to be okay here. We're going to try and finish off the King George. He was healing back up. We want to light a fire on him and take him out of the match here. He's turning to expose broadside. He has switched to HE, which is probably the correct choice for him in this context. 
The HE doesn't really care what the thickness of my bow armor is. If the gun caliber is large enough, it can still penetrate the bow and do damage that way. It's not probably going to be as much, and I don't know whether the King George 340mm HE shells can penetrate this bow. But even if they can't, they can hit the superstructure, do damage there, and start fires. So, now we're going to get into a situation where we're going to be bow tanking this Bismarck at very close range. He is going to shoot AP at our bow and bounce it harmlessly off. If you find yourself in a situation in a battleship with 380mm guns facing a bow tanking Wichita or a Baltimore or a Chapayev or anything with 27mm bow armor, this is what you don't want to do. Now the Bismarck is angling away from me to, I think, mitigate the damage that my AP shells can do to him. Which, fine, you know, we were getting some nice hits, 5k or so, a salvo with the AP, but we switched back to the HE, and our shots are pretty lucrative there. So he's turned away from me. What I think he wants to do, well, he's got a number of options. One, he can fire HE at me. That's probably not going to be quick enough for him. We're out DPMing him, and in fact, we take him down there. But he had about two other options besides firing HE to get damage on me that way. He could have fired his AP shells at my turrets. These turrets are small cruiser turrets. They get taken out easily by battleship caliber AP. They can get taken out temporarily or, even worse, permanently. I've had that happen plenty of times when I was trying to bow tank in the Wichita, which is a dangerous move if you're facing an opponent who knows where to shoot. So, taking out the turrets with the battleship caliber AP, good way to dislodge a bow tanking Wichita. If you don't hit the turrets, you'll probably hit the superstructure, and you can do a significant amount of damage that way. The other thing to do would be to get closer, not sail further away. Try to outflank the Wichita, get around on its side, and shoot it, preferably when it's slightly angled with the AP, so that maybe you can score some citadels instead of getting over penetrations. Those are your options there, and, you know, that's a look at understanding your ship and your opponent's ship. We end the battle with 143,000 damage. Hope you enjoyed. If so, leave a like, a comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. See ya.